hey, welcome back. In the second segment, we'll continue discussing for loops and some ways to make them even more useful. So in this example, imagine you have ocean currents from three locations, or maybe you could think of water masses from the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Imagine you measured the temperature, salinity, and oxygen of each of those ocean currents individually. And then those three currents flowed together, perhaps around Antarctica, as they do, and got mixed up in equal proportions. Now, what we're going to do is calculate the resulting seawater properties by averaging each of the properties of those three ocean currents. And we'll do that using two for loops, one nested inside the other. So first, we've recorded the three parameters and their three units in these two lists. And then we've stored the data in this list of lists called currents mix, where the first sublist stores the three temperatures of the three currents, the second sublist stores the three salinities, and the third uh, stores the three oxygen concentrations. And we've created variables to save the length of each of these dimensions, n params is the number of different properties, which is three, and n currents uh, is the number of currents that we'll be averaging over, which is also three. Okay, so let's focus on uh, the two for loops at the bottom here. So what, we've, what we've created is what's known as an outer for loop. And that's over here. It's going to iterate over the three parameters, starting with temperature. And each time it will set the variable param index to a value from range n params, which if you remember is the list 0, 1, 2, because n params is 3. And since the definition of an average is the sum of the values divided by the total number of values, we have to create a variable to keep track of that sum, which will get reset to zero every cycle of this outer for loop, uh, because it's inside the loop here. And within this outer loop, which examines those three parameters, we now create an inner for loop to iterate over the three currents. So this inner loop will loop over what we call current index three times, because n currents is three. And each time it will retrieve the measurement in currents mix using this double bracket format. Because if you remember, the data is a list of lists. So first is the outer list variable of param index, and then the inner sublist variable of current index. Then once we've retrieved the value from currents mix, we add it to the variable sum using the plus equals operator. And finally, once this two line long uh, inner loop has looped three times, covering each of the three currents, we calculate the average value for that parameter from the outer loop, uh, in this case, average temperature, by dividing the sum of temperatures by the number of currents. And then we get to print that average. And finally, this outer loop will start over again with a second cycle where pram index now equals one. And that cycle will calculate the average salinity, which is the second variable. That's OK if this is confusing. Um, I'll show it to you in a uh, bit of a different way here. So breaking this down by the loop cycles. On the very first cycle, the outer loop's pram index is 0. And the inner loop's current index is also 0. So we are examining the first temperature value, which is current mix brackets 0 brackets 0. And that's 4.4. And we go through all, all three cycles here of the inner loop, averaging those temperature values while we remain in the first cycle of the outer loop. And only after that, we can move to the second cycle of the outer loop. And the inner loop averages those three salinity values. And then finally, we get to move to the third cycle of the outer loop, where we average the, the, the three oxygen values. So OK, we, in all, we've gone through nine loop cycles because three times three is nine. What happens when you run this code? Well, those print statements spit out the average value of temperature across the three currents, which is printed at the end of the first cycle of the outer loop. Uh, then the average value of salinity, which was printed during the second cycle of the outer loop. And finally, the average value of oxygen. And again, these represent the properties of the seawater if those three ocean currents uh, came together and mixed. OK, so this may seem kind of silly because you can calculate this easily by hand. But hopefully, you can see how this nested loop construction would become really useful if you had something like 10 seawater properties that you were averaging over maybe 20,000 ocean measurements. I should mention, uh, now would be a good time to pause, maybe look back through the previous slides if uh, this nested loop business isn't quite making sense yet. 
or better yet, better yet, you can uh, tinker with this code in the accompanying Colab notebook, which again, I've linked in Canvas. Um, because I've you know, got to move on now um, and talk about what is, I think, thankfully, a little bit of an easier aspect of for loops. And that is the zip function. So what zip does is join or zip together two or more iterables, such as lists. And it gives you back an iterable of tuples. As an example, if you give it uh, these two lists as an argument, it will give you back an iterable of length four, uh, where each entry is a tuple pair. In this case, a number and a letter. Similarly, if you gave it three lists, it would zip those together. And it would give you an iterable that includes tuple triplets from those three lists. Here's another example. We have two lists, params and units. And we write a for loop that iterates over those two lists, which have been zipped together. But here, you have to tell the for loop to expect those tuple pairs coming from the zip function by unpacking the tuples here into param, comma, unit. So what this looks like is for param, comma, unit in zip, params, units. Print, param has units of unit. OK, and that gives this nice result here, starting with a tuple pair for temperature and ending with a tuple pair uh, for oxygen. The second useful function I want to mention is enumerate. And unlike zip, it takes only one argument, which can be any iterable, such as this list here. And it spits out an iterable object of tuple pairs. Again, uh, but this time, each tuple pair is index comma value. So for this list x, the enumerate function will give you an iterable with tuples 0 comma a, 1 comma b, 2 comma c, and so on. And you can iterate on uh, that enumerate object in a for loop. So here we have some abbreviations for chemical species in the ocean and then their full names. Uh, then here we're, we're looping over the iterable returned by calling enumerate on the list of abbreviations. And for each cycle of the for loop, it will unpack those tuples into the variables index and abbrev. So for instance, we can say print abbrev stands for names brackets index. So here, here we're indexing into the list of full names, uh, which is this, this variable here, using the indices that have been provided by enumerate, which again are 0, 1, and 2. And this is what you get. So you can think of enumerate as a very compact way of getting both an index and a value in a for loop. And as you might imagine, you can do something similar to this using the zip function. Uh, but enumerate uh, just provides a different way to do it. And it's useful in some other cases, too. Uh, and that is uh, actually all I have to say about for loops. And we'll see you uh, in the next segment.